about a tablespoon of honey. And then right before the workout, I'll do another 20, 25 grams of carbs. So I'm getting anywhere from 25 to 50 grams of carbs. What's up YouTube, how you doing? It's Carnivore Kurt here. And on this episode, I wanna talk about carbs. As we all kind of know in the carnivore community, especially the ketogenic diet community, there is this huge sort of stigma when it comes to eating carbs. In fact, in a lot of the health community with metabolic health, people are concerned about carbs. And to be fair, a lot of people have abused carbs. Carbs have become a primary macronutrient in the standard American diet, but we deal with a lot of refined carbs. We deal with a lot of carbs consistently throughout the day. And I think that if you're looking at performance optimization, you have to understand how your body works. And in this video, I wanna talk about how carbs can potentially be a powerful superpower when you're in a ketogenic state, when you're on a carnivore diet, and what carb you can maybe consider as a carnivore. So I'm into peak health. I'm into peak optimization, physical health, physique training. I wouldn't consider myself like a professional bodybuilder, but I would say when I look at myself in the community, I'm one of the stronger, more sort of like built individuals. And I, at an older age, have continued to maintain and build muscle mass and build strength. I have not lost that. And I think it's really important as we age to be very mindful of our muscle mass and our strength and not just allow our bodies to sort of lose that because one of the biggest risk factors for mortality as you age is the loss of muscle mass. As you get older, especially once you hit your 40s and 50s and beyond, if you aren't maintaining muscle, it becomes much harder to put muscle on and it becomes much easier for your body to get injured, for you to, to not handle excess glucose in your diet, to be much less metabolically healthy. When we're talking about athletic performance, there's really three energy systems that your body utilizes. Three energy systems that the body is using to generate energy depending on the time of workout you're doing. There's the ATPCP system, and that's the first system that gets initiated whenever you utilize your muscles. It essentially accesses local glycogen stores. It does not require oxygen, and you are essentially at the muscle level utilizing whatever energy is locally stored within your muscles. It uses creatine phosphate to resynthesize ATP, which is the primary energy source for your cells. It functions very short term. We're talking the first 15, 10 to 15 seconds of movement. Your body's constantly wanting to replenish this as you go through. The second system is called the glycolytic system. This is where you're at about two to three minutes into a physical exercise. Maybe you're lifting heavy weight, you're doing um, plyometrics, something explosive where you're generating that burn. You're generating the physical burn, you're generating demands in your body and you're basically utilizing the glucose stores in your body in what's called the glycolytic system, breaking down glucose with specific enzymes. This system functions on the short-term supply of carbohydrates you have in your body and your muscles. Most people don't realize that when you're in a ketogenic diet, you still have blood sugar. You still have a glucose supply in your muscles, in your bloodstream, because you need glucose for certain processes in your body. In the body, especially on a ketogenic diet where you're primarily consuming carbs and protein, is going to use a process called gluconeogenesis to basically load up your liver with glucose. And it takes non-carb precursors, so things that are not carbohydrates, and without getting too into the weeds, it essentially takes amino acids, proteins, and glycerol from fat storage. It combines those with lactate and pyruvate to create glucose in your liver. On a ketogenic diet, we get a supply of glucose through this process, the glycolytic system, where you're dealing with burn and you're really utilizing carbohydrates. The third system is the oxidative system. And this is really kind of where um, it lasts indefinitely, where you know we're talking you can run a marathon, you can kind of go at a half pace jog for hours upon hours. And that's really what keto does. It gives you kind of that, that consistent energy and it's produced through the classic Krebs cycle. And it can really support sort of endurance type activities. But when we're talking about physique building, when we're talking about athletic optimal performance, you, you need to be able to tap into something else. Now, if you're metabolically unhealthy, then I would highly recommend you watch some of the other videos and focus on getting your body fat percentage down. Generally speaking, a male who has less than 15% body fat or a female who has less than 20% body fat, then targeted carb introduction, targeted carbs for performance may benefit you. I know personally in my experience, 
being on a ketogenic diet for on and off for three and a half, four years, being on a strict carnivore diet for the last up almost to two years now, I have noticed when I really push myself and do longer high intensity workouts or lifting sessions, there are many days where I'll go into the gym and I will struggle. I will feel the energy low. I will feel that lull. I just won't have the power to really push and get the big like sort of surge that I'm looking for to get the performance that I want. So recently I started looking into carbs and it's really kind of restrictive what you can take in if you're on a carnivore diet. But what I have found is you can do something like a local honey and local honey is better than probably the uh, more mass produced honeys because one, it's you're supporting the local economy. Two, the bees in the local area are producing the honey from pollen gathered in the local area. And there are cases of people who see allergy symptoms reduced when they consume local honey. Honey is about 60, 40, it's about half and half fructose glucose, which also we're understanding through the science may be better for taking in more carbohydrates as store for performance enhancement. The other thing I've done is I've looked at timing and the amount of carbs and some studies around this. And in the studies that they've done with people who are metabolically healthy, who are ketogenic, again, ketosis does not mean by definition, you necessarily can't eat carbs. In fact, you can eat carbs and remain in ketosis. What it means is your body is synthesizing, creating ketones. You have ketone levels in your bloodstream and you're metabolically healthy. Because when most of us wake up, whether or not we eat a carb meal or we're not even in keto, a lot of people will fast when they sleep throughout the night and they'll wake up with some level of ketones in their blood and they'll have some low level of ketosis, assuming they're metabolically healthy. So here's the deal. If you want performance, if you're doing exercises beyond say 20 minutes where you are activating that burn, where you are triggering the lactate in your muscles, where you're actually activating and needing that glycolytic system to deliver energy from glucose to your muscles, then it may be beneficial to add targeted carbs to your workouts. Now, I think one of the best people out there on this topic is probably Dr. Jordan Joy. Um, I have looked at other topics. I think the Strong Sisters have some great content on their channel as well if you wanna talk or research some of their interviews they've done. You can also look at videos from Thomas DeLar. He's got some pretty good information out there and um, there are quite a few articles out there on the webs about how carbs can be protein sparing and they can add more direct energy reserves for us pre-workout. But I'm gonna break it down. So if you're looking for athletic performance and you have a heavy day of lifting or you have a heavy day of high intensity work where you're going to be activating that burn and you know you're gonna be doing that workout for more than say 30 minutes and you wanna give yourself a store of energy that's gonna be more easily accessed because carbs are gonna be, when consumed in something like a form of honey, are gonna be much more readily available to access right to your muscles, then it would be probably wise for many of us to consider incorporating 30 minutes potentially an hour pre-workout, 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates. Personally, I weigh about 160 pounds and I am doing about 40 grams of carbs. And I'm also adding in exogenous ketones during my workout. So this, this overall hack is basically the idea that I'm taking exogenous ketones, I'm taking pre-carbohydrates, pre-workout carbohydrates, and then I could potentially also be doing intra-carb workout additions if I plan on working out longer. The idea here is that the carbs give your body that readily available energy reserve from the actual macronutrient for the glycolytic system to actually process them and performance enhance. And personally, I've noticed this. I am lifting heavier, I'm having stronger workouts, I'm getting better strength gains, and I can go much longer when I have some carbs pre-workout. I also noticed that my blood sugar doesn't crash because again, I'm not eating carbs most mornings. In my mornings, I eat fairly fat heavy. I find that gives me the most steady energy. I feel the most even. I'm able to do most of my cognitive thinking work and business work. But then once I get to my afternoon and I'm prepping for my workouts, I typically about an hour before add 20 grams of carbs, about a tablespoon of butter, uh, about a tablespoon of honey. And then right before the workout, I'll do another 20, 25 grams of carbs. So I'm getting anywhere from 25 to 50 grams of carbs pre-workout 
assuming that I'm gonna do an hour of pretty intense lifting or exercise, it's gonna activate my glycolytic system and really activate that burn and demand that I need to be pulling in more glucose to power my muscles. There's a lot there to dissect, but the idea there, again, if you are a male and you're sub 15% body fat, you are metabolically healthy. If you are a female and you're below 20% body fat and you feel as though you're metabolically healthy and you're looking to add to your overall energy levels in your performance when you're working out and wanting to get better results, then consider adding targeted carbs. And I think the safest carbs to consider would be honey. It's got a balance of glucose and fructose. That's a pretty good sweet spot for what our bodies can metabolize in terms of having the ability to take on even more carbs and process them. And it gives us energy reserves right away that are very utiliz utilizable during our workouts when we do them intra and pre-workout. My general protocol, take about 20 grams of honey about an hour before my workout, another 20 to 25 grams of honey just before the workout, and drink up an exogenous ketone, about 10 to 12 grams of beta-hydroxybutyrate exogenous ketones while in the workout. Will I be in ketosis while I'm in the workout? Probably not, although I will have ketones in my bloodstream from the exogenous ketones. But very soon after, after I've done the workout, I'm gonna go back into ketosis because I'm not consuming carbs in a large amount post-workout. And there are some people who like to take carbs with protein post-workout. For me, I'm also upping my protein intake. I'm probably adding 40-ish, 50 grams within that half hour window post-workout. And I'm sticking to lower fat post-workout right after that because fat reduces the absorption rate of the protein. So I'm doing carbs pre-workout, exogenous ketones. Here's an example of a brand that I just picked up, Key Nutrients, Key Keto Lemon Lime Sherbet. This one's pretty clean. They both have a little bit of a sweetener in them. I couldn't find a good sort of like mix for my formula, but this really did seem to give me a boost. The other one I'm looking at is, is Keto Function Ignite Keto. Again, both of these are going to be beta-hydroxybutyrate exogenous ketones, and they've got some salts in them, and essentially they give you exogenous ketones, so you can sort of stay in ketosis, if you will, while you're adding carbs, and it just allows your body to have energy reserves to get performance. For me, I wanna be able to work out, but I also wanna be able to work out and get the gains and the strength that I want, and if that means I can add some honey, um, if that means that I have to add honey, honey's not a bad thing. And in the studies that I found, especially if you read Dr. Jordan Joy's book, there have been some studies that have shown that individuals who actually add carbs pre-workout get better performance in their workouts, they have stronger workouts, and they see fat loss. Yes, that's right. Even with carbs, they see better levels of fat loss and performance in their body composition change because of actually introducing carbs. So for me, um, it is an interesting shift, but I think it makes a lot of sense. I haven't seen a whole lot of negatives in it. And so I believe that we can optimize and take advantage of carbs in a calculated way, especially when we know we're gonna be doing something athletic and we time them and target them in the right way with the right quality. I hope that was helpful. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. If you made it this far, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, Go check out the last video we dropped. It's amazing. Go check out our website. We've got some awesome content there. We'll be putting out blogs. I'll probably be posting a blog specifically about this and referencing some of the studies for you. So you can go in and see those studies and get some of that data and look for yourself and decide. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, share, like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Let's get optimized.